Welcome to Episode 5 of Ask the Grounding Experts, where our experts from ENS Grounding Solutions answer your engineering questions about the world of grounding and earthing. Today, our very own David Stockin answers a question emailed to us by Michael R. Thank you for your question, Michael. He asks, how exactly do GFCIs and circuit breakers work? Yeah, so how do uh, GFCIs and circuit breakers work? So uh, for those of you who are in Europe, you may know them as RCDs, or residual current devices. Uh, here in the United States, we call them ground fault circuit interrupters, or GFCIs. They're the same thing, just two different names. So if you see me saying GFCI, just know that means RCD as well. So residual current device, GFCI, same exact item, different names. And then we have circuit breakers. And oftentimes we're using both at the same time in our system. And ultimately this involves what we call overcurrent protection, right? We want to protect people from too much current, right? Um, so they work very differently. So in the case of a circuit breaker, it's looking for a short term, very short term, maximum amount of current and in the case of a GFCI, it's looking for a very minimum amount of current. And it comes back to our fault current path. So we have a previous video. If you're interested in fault current paths, check that out. But in the case of a circuit breaker, uh, we have an accidental electrical fault. Say your kid sticks a, a fork in the outlet, right? And it causes a spark, right? And don't let your kid stick forks in outlets, by the way. It's a very bad very bad thing to do. Um, but let's say they do and you get that spark and the lights go out, right? The circuit breaker has been tripped. And all of this happens in faster than you can blink your eye. I mean, in, in like something like one, one, 120th of a second it occurs. And what happens that current comes in and it, it ties the, the hot wire is accidentally tied to, in this case to the ground wire with no resistance, right? So a max, uh, some current flows through, goes down our ground wire, back to our circuit breaker box, through the neutral to ground bond in the box, up the neutral wire to the transformer that's owned by the utility company hanging out on the pole, right? Hits the center tap of the winding, goes across the winding, causing a massive current to flow, right? And if you haven't looked inside your panel, uh, there's actually a little label inside of it. It can actually be scary. Um, the amount of uh, asymmetrical current, fault current flow that can fly down your into your panel, right? It's 10,000, even 50,000 amps for a very short period of time, literally half of a cycle. But a massive amount of current will fly down that wire, hit the inside of your electrical panel, and causes your circuit breaker to trip, killing it and stopping the circuit. And that happens literally within 1 120th of a second, right? the half of a cycle uh, that fast. So a circuit breaker is designed for to stop maximum levels of current from flying into your system. How does the GFCI work? GFCI work, works very differently. So in our hot wire and our neutral wire, and everybody says, oh, neutrals can't hurt you. Well, that's just simply not true, right? A neutral is a horrible name. I wish we no one had ever called it that. It, it has as exactly as much current on it as the hot wire has on it, right? So if you have 10 amps on your hot wire, you will have 10 amps on your neutral wire, right? It is carrying the return path, right? The electrons come down, go across the hot wire, go across the load, and back through the neutral, right? The electrons don't know that we as humans changed the name and decided all of a sudden that we're going to no longer call them hot, we're going to call them neutral currents. Um, they're still the exact same currents that are just as deadly. So remember, there's nothing safe about neutral currents. They are very dangerous. They're just dangerous as hot currents, right? So they come down, 
uh, you have 10 amps on the hot wire, you should have 10 amps on the neutral wire. So we place the single Rogowski coil around those two wires, right? And it should be zero. The Rogowski coil will measure zero. So if your wife is using her hair dryer and she drops it into the sink, right? The drops into the sink, the because we have a connection to our water pipe system, right? This is a topic for another video. Uh, way back at the panel, we have a connection to that water pipe. Some of that current is going to travel down the sink, the drain of the sink, or and on or onto the uh, copper pipes feeding water to the sink, right? And it's going to go back. It's going to take the copper water pipe back to the electrical panel. So we will no longer, if we have 10 amps coming in through the hot wire, now we only have, say, 9 amps going back on the neutral because 1 amp is now traveling on the cold water pipe, right? We, she dropped the, the hair dryer into the sink and some of that current now is traveling back through the water pipe network. That means now there's a differential between the hot and the neutral. And those wires that are between those two coils, now there's a one amp difference. And they're no longer cross-canceling each other, right? So the hot wire will have 10 amps on it. The neutral wire should have 10 amps on it. But they're 180 degrees out of phase. So they cross-cancel each other at equal zero. But now if they, we only have 10 amps on the hot and 9 amps on the neutral, that means we're going to detect in our Rogowski coil 1 amp, right? That one amp will trip that breaker, that, that circuit break, that GFCI or RCD is set for between 5 to 30 milliamps. So one amp, that's a thousand milliamps, right, is more than enough to trip that circuit and kill it dead. So it's looking for a minimum differential between the, of current between the hot and neutral wire. And that kills the circuit, keeping your wife and kids and people swimming in swimming pools safe, right? Now, here in the United States, we don't have GFCIs on every circuit. In Europe, you generally do. Every single circuit, including your refrigerator, has it. Uh, here in the States, we're just a little bit behind the curve in getting that kind of protection. Um, uh, so oftentimes in Europe, you don't even know it's there. We're here in the States, we have very dedicated little uh, 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 outlets that have little test buttons on them. Um, you may not see that in Europe, but you are already protected because it's handled at the panel. Where here in the States, we tend to handle it at the outlet level and only at very specific outlets or on specific devices such as a hair dryer. But the difference between a circuit breaker and an, a GFCI has to deal with uh, what its intent is in tripping and disconnecting your electrical circuit automatically, right? A circuit breaker automatically disconnects when it gets a maximum amount of current that exceeds the setting of the circuit breaker. A GFCI or RCD di automatically disconnects your electrical circuit based on a minimum differential between the hot and neutral wires. And that's the difference. That's how GFCIs and circuit breakers work. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please give us a quick like down below and subscribe to stay up to date on future educational videos we will be publishing. And feel free to post questions or comments below as well. We might even feature your questions in future videos. If you want to learn more about the amazing world of electrical engineering and grounding, be sure to check out our certified online courses at the links in the description below to kickstart your career. We'll see you next time.